The first North Korean troops have probably already reached the front line in the Kursk region. As Forbes reports, citing intercepted radio communications from Russian military personnel, the invaders are secretly moving North Korean soldiers in the direction of the Kursk salient, which is under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. Intercepted communications by Ukrainian intelligence confirm that thousands of North Korean troops have begun to arrive. In one conversation, two Russian military officials spoke of a Kamaz truck driver named Andrei Sveridenko, who was stopped at the entrance to Kursk. Several such vehicles were detained by Russian military police on the highway in the Kursk region since one of the Kamaz trucks had a civilian license plate. The fact that the vehicle had no combat purpose caused concern among security officials. The publication noted that the deployment of North Korean forces in Kursk is not reflected in the documents. Sveridenko's batch of North Korean soldiers was intended for the 810th Marine Brigade of the Russian Navy, which is trying to repel the Ukrainian offensive on the eastern edge of the Kursk, near the village of Ruskaya Konopelka. Ukrainian drones and artillery are holding off the Russians for now, Forbes writes. The publication recalled that Marine units are known for their brutality and poor discipline. For example, the 155th Marine Brigade recently captured and executed nine Ukrainian drone operators. According to Ukrainian intelligence, about 12,000 military personnel have already been transferred from the DPRK to Russia, including three generals and 500 officers. This is also confirmed by intelligence services of a number of other countries. On October the 26th, President Volodymyr Zelensky stated that the Russian authorities are determined to continue the war against Ukraine, and therefore soldiers from North Korea could be on the battlefield in the near future. Ukrainian military expert Pavel Lakichuk says that in the coming days, Russia may increase the number of North Korean troops to participate in military operations in the Kursk region, where the Ukrainian armed forces have begun active assaults. According to the Kremlin's plan, these forces should compensate for the losses of the Russian army. The Kremlin has tested dozens of different ways to compensate for the losses of Russian army personnel at the front. These North Korean soldiers are the first sign of activity in this direction, which may intensify over time. The expert noted, if we are talking about 11 to 12,000 North Korean soldiers, then there will be enough for two to three weeks of combat operations taking into account daily losses. But the very beginning of Russia's use of North Korean troops is a serious signal, and it is bad, Lakichuk noted. If Putin and Kim Jong-un manage to scale up this experience of attracting DPRK troops to 100 to 300,000 soldiers in the future, then it will be possible to do without conducting a partial mobilization. Footage has been released showing a joint attack on a Russian position by the 47th, 33rd and 21st Brigades of the Ukrainian Army. Armored vehicles of the 47th Brigade created a smoke screen near the position of the invaders, making it difficult for them to see. As a result, with the support of the artillerymen of the 21st Brigade, the infantrymen of the 33rd Brigade were able to advance and clear the position. Ukrainian fighters destroyed the invaders in the area using mainly cluster and fugas shells.
The Atesh Partisan Movement has announced the mobilization of its agents into the ranks of the Russian armed forces, according to a report shared by the group on Telegram. The report claims that, for the first time since the full-scale war began, Russia has openly started drafting Ukrainians from recently occupied territories from military service. Agents from our movement took advantage of this and came to the military enlistment offices as volunteers. This will allow us to conduct operations within military units and gather more relevant information, the partisans said. According to Atesh, residents in the Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions are being forced to serve in the Russian military, which the group considers an international war crime. The Russians reportedly promised that the conscripts will not be sent to the special military operation area. But no one believes this for obvious reasons. If you have been drafted in the temporarily occupied Ukrainian territories, reach out to us and make the occupiers regret everything they have done, the partisans reported. Earlier in October, the Center for National Resistance reported that conscription had begun in the temporarily occupied territories. The draft campaign is set to last until December the 31st, with a target of mobilization at least 150,000 recruits. This number includes a significant portion from the annexed regions of Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, Kherson and Crimea. The first conscription campaign in the occupied territories took place in the autumn of last year. As then, recruits are now being promised that their service will not involve participation in the special military operation. However, Center for National Resistance reports indicate that many conscripts were later coerced into signing contracts with Russia's Ministry of Defense and ended up fighting against their homeland. In a report issued at the end of August, Center for National Resistance suggested that residents in occupied regions were reluctant to join the Russian military. All regions have failed to meet recruitment targets for the Russian armed forces. The overall shortfall across the temporarily occupied territories is 60%. The report read, The situation is reportedly worse in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions where Russians have managed to recruit only a few dozen individuals.